This video module is to review the medical aspects of embryo donation and adoption. And this is important for uh, embryo recipients uh, because uh, for one thing, the promise that we make to donors is that we will only transfer their embryos to couples which will give their embryos the best chance of uh, coming to birth. And of course, uh, the general health of the recipient is very important in that regard. First of all, we have some age requirements for the couples. We uh, ask that the mother uh, be not more than 45 years of age and the father not more than uh, 55 years of age. Uh, the combined age of the uh, couple, not more than 100. Uh, the reasons uh, for this are, are a few. First of all, we think it's important that the parents both have a life expectancy of at least 20 years so that the uh, children will at least have their parents in the home uh, through graduation from high school. The um, other is that, of course, um, uh, pregnancy complications increase, and especially in the woman, after the age of 45. And so we don't want to knowingly put a woman in uh, the position of uh, having a high risk for a complicated pregnancy based on her age. There are a few other uh, general requirements uh, that we have for uh, recipients of donated embryos. First of all, we don't want them to be uh, addicted to any substances, to have a tobacco uh, habit, to be addicted to alcohol or drugs. I think the reasons for this are pretty obvious, uh, but uh, they, they certainly are both medical and social. So uh, children born to drug or alcohol addicted uh, parents uh, do tend to have a higher instance of abuse and other problems. And then of course, uh, any of these issues can cause problems with the pregnancy and increased risk of uh, miscarriage, fetal anomalies and, and other problems. So that's uh, important for us as well. Uh, we would. Uh, uh, both uh, parents to be in uh, good general health and that's again not only for uh, ensuring that they have life expectancy of 20 years but also that they'll be able to give uh, good and consistent care to any children that might be born from embryo adoption uh, in their early years and uh, as uh, any of you out there who are already parents might know early years of raising a child can be uh, uh, physically uh, emotionally and psychological trying at times so it is important that uh, our parents have good physical and um, uh, emotional and psychological health as well when you come in for your initial history and, and visit, we'll talk to you about any problems that you may have had uh, with gynecologic conditions in the past. There are some gynecologic and some other pregnancy complications that may not make you a good candidate for embryo transfer. For example, uh, problems with severe endometriosis could make it uh, much less likely that the embryos could implant. Same thing with problems with uterine fibroids. Certain anatomic problems in the mother could make it more likely that a miscarriage could occur. So we'll talk to you about your history and then we'll do a careful physical exam and screen you at the time of your first visit as well. First of all, the mother takes estrogen of some form or other uh, for a variable period of time, usually around two weeks to prepare the lining. And then several days before she has her embryo transfer, we start her on progesterone, okay? So if a, if a woman cannot take estrogen or progesterone for some reason, she's probably not going to be a candidate for a transfer. After she has taken her estrogen and progesterone for the prescribed period of time, uh, we bring her in here, this is the transfer room, where she'll lay on this table. Uh, we have an ultrasound machine here and uh, a window where the embryologist passes the uh, embryos to me after we've done a uh, prep of the vagina and cervix. And then those embryos are slid using a very small and, and atraumatic catheter or tube into the cervix under ultrasound guidance so that we see exactly where they're going. This is a painless process 
and uh, once we get the prep done, the actual transfer takes only seconds, so it's a very quick process. It does have to be done with an, uh, a full bladder, so if you're a woman who uh, has a problem holding her bladder, we have you go through what we call bladder boot camp uh, for a few weeks before having your transfer just to train yourself to hold your bladder so that you're not extremely uncomfortable and, and, and in pain during the transfer process itself. After the transfer is done, typically a woman just gets up and walks out of the room, empties her bladder, and then uh, goes on her way after we've just gone over a, a few instructions with her and made sure that she's clear on uh, her injections and her medication uh, regimen until her pregnancy test. The pregnancy test is done about nine to 12 days after the transfer in general. We repeat that a couple of days later to make sure the level is going up appropriately. And if all looks good, we would do an uh, ultrasound at about uh, uh, six weeks of, of pregnancy, which turns out to be just uh, really about three to four weeks after the actual embryo transfer to look to see if there's a gestational sac and ideally a fetal pole and a, and a heartbeat. Uh, three weeks later, we repeat that. If all looks good, then we release you to your obstetrician and you send us a picture of the baby.